There are five things that if you do in preparing for the CISSP exam, you are almost guaranteeing that you're going to fail. In this video, we're going to cover the five things that you want to avoid if you want to get that brand new shiny CISSP certification. If this is the first time that we're meeting, my name is John Good. I'm a cybersecurity professional, trainer, YouTuber, all the above. If you liked the video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. For those who want to become a Patreon, visit the link in the description. You can donate as little as $1 to show your support for the channel, or I'm also offering mentor sessions where we can do things like review your resume and go over job hunting tips that are specific to you. You can also join me on the Discord channel. The link is in the description. All right, let's get into the video. So based on several comments that I've received, in the video that I made about passing the CISSP exam in two weeks, which I'll go ahead and link up in the cards and the description as well. Those inspired this video to be made to make sure that people are going into the CISSP exam with the right mindset. One of the problems with the CISSP exam is that people always seem to have trouble studying for the exam and passing. So why do people have so many issues? Well, in cybersecurity, we deal a lot with technology and networks and systems. So it's really easy to fall into that trap thinking that technology is always the right answer. Something might be either right or wrong based on configurations, best practices, and whatever the case may be. But as far as the CISSP exam and that mindset, you're not necessarily going to always have to answer things with a technology solution. So let's get into the reasons. Number one, you don't think like a manager. The CISSP exam is one of those exams where one of the major pieces of advice that you'll get a lot from all kinds of different people is that you have to think like a manager. What does this exactly mean to think like a manager? Well, first of all, human safety is extremely important. And honestly, if that's an answer in the question, human safety will always be the most important thing. Okay. If you answer technology is more important than human safety, you 100% of the time are going to be wrong. You have to consider human safety. Thinking like a manager also means that you're capable of applying risk management practices. So for example, you might be faced with a vulnerability that is extremely dangerous in a global network environment but you're actually looking at a single isolated system. So that vulnerability is actually possibly not relevant to the environment. That's how risk management fits into the equation. You have to be able to distinguish between those kinds of different situations. Number two, you rely too much on your experience instead of the common body of knowledge. Well, you should realize that just because you experience something in the real world and maybe it worked out in that situation, that might not actually be the correct thing to do in that situation or even all situations. The common body of knowledge covers so many aspects of information security and cybersecurity that these foundational concepts that are in the CBK, they actually can help you steer towards the right decision, even though it might not be black and white in some situations and might have to be adjusted. The CBK has been around for a long time and it's constantly refined by experts. So you're actually relying on a lot of this expert knowledge from the industry. So you really should try to absorb as much of that solid foundational information as you can. Number three, you haven't taken enough practice exams or questions. The CISSP exam questions that you're going to face, I promise you, they are going to be really different than you're used to, especially if you've taken a lot of technical type exams. You should expect paragraphs or several sentences in the questions that include a lot of irrelevant information to throw you off. And you have to go through those questions and pick out the important pieces of the question and what it's actually asking for. By taking a lot of practice exams and questions, you're actually going to improve your skill set in deciphering that information 
or what the question is actually asking for. Also, by taking a lot of questions, you're actually going to improve your stamina for when it comes to exam time. Think about when you're running a race, right? You don't want to all of a sudden run the full race on race day and not have prepared leading up to that. It's the same thing with these questions. I guarantee you, even though you might only get, let's say, 100 questions, well, these questions are very long and hard to read through if you're doing a lot of them at once. So you don't want to get to question 50 and just be so exhausted that you're ready to go home and stop taking the exam. You have to have enough stamina to get you through that exam. So that's what taking a lot of questions can help you with. Number four, you didn't use different study formats to learn the material. Generally speaking, using a single study material is likely to put you at a disadvantage. Why is that? Well, think about different courses and classes that you've had throughout your, you know, your life in high school, college, maybe professional courses, whatever the case may be. There's a good chance that you had some instructors or some teachers that taught in a way that really clicked in your mind. And then you've had others where it felt like, well, they were just speaking a completely different language than you speak. That's a very common thing, right? It's the same when you're studying for any certification, but especially for the CISSP exam. You want to get a lot of different exposure, whether that's books, videos, practice exams, all kinds of different sources and materials that you want to get exposed to. Something else that's useful in this is that different instructors and different materials are going to focus on different subjects, either by the depth that they go into or how long they cover on that subject. So you really want to get the exposure to the different areas. And you can also utilize the other resources that focus on different subjects if you're weak in a certain area. So it just overall will help you a lot to use a bunch of different resources. And number five, you either don't have enough experience or you don't have the right experience. So with the CISSP exam, you don't have to wait until you hit the experience requirement to take the exam. You can actually take it before and become an associate of ISC squared and not have the full certification, but you might not have enough experience in different areas to pass. We know that the CISSP exam covers a whole bunch of domains and different areas. Now this can be based on your experience, definitely, but in general, there's just ones that are harder to pick up than others. You're going to have non-technical areas, such as risk management, that conceptually are very easy to pick up or relatively easy to pick up because they're not highly technical, but questions around those kind of areas, because they are not technical, they are much more likely to be ambiguous or vague, and they're going to force you to rely on experience and judgment when answering the question. Some work environments, like the Department of Defense, really focus on the common body of knowledge and making sure that solutions that get implemented are implemented correctly. Then you also have work environments like startup type environments that do a lot of things on the fly, right? And so things might not always be implemented correctly. This is where work experience and where you worked can really impact the, the ease of preparing for the exam. It's kind of one of those things where if you're used to always doing things wrong and then all of a sudden you start learning the CISSP way, it might be a real shock because there's a lot of differences in the official and best practices ways of implementing cybersecurity. But that doesn't mean that you can't pass coming from one of these other environments, like a startup environment, but just realize that some environments are going to have you at a disadvantage because frankly, you're just not used to doing things appropriately. You're used to doing things ad hoc and on the fly. So question of the day, are you planning on taking the CISSP? If you are, when are you planning on taking it? Let me know down in the comments below.
Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you later.